The story really starts when we started going to Peru. So there were these incredible fossils. We first discovered them in 2006 that uh, started changing our ideas about penguin evolution. So 36 million years ago, Peru is a very different place. There are no Andes. They're sort of proto-mountains. We have a series of what appear to be islands and lagoons. And now we have evidence of multiple species of very sizable penguins. This animal would have had a swimming length of approximately 1.5 meters and the giant penguin skull is like this long. And it was actually a student, an undergraduate student, um, Ali Altamirano, who found the fossil and noted that unusually there seemed to be scale impressions on the foot. And immediately this, this sort of prompted kind of incredible excitement because no one's ever seen the scales preserved in any or any kind of evidence of soft tissue in a fossil penguin. And then we took the fossil back to the lab and meticulously removing flakes of rock from around the specimen, I was lucky enough right near one of the wings to uncover what was clearly the tip of a feather. It's our first insight into what are the series of early modifications in the feathering closer to this transition to basically flying underwater. In the origin of penguins, what the new fossil shows us is that modifications occurred in the shape of these feathers really early on. And these tiny, tiny feathers that have been described as scale-like or scale-shaped create a very streamlined contour to the front of the wing. The primary feathers are densely packed. They've lost this distinctive asymmetrical um, organization we see here. And kind of more dramatically, we see a dense packing of primary feathers, whereas living birds have, give or take, 10 primary feathers in the wing, penguins have more like 20. And they're stacked one on top of the other to create a stiffened flipper. So the, all of these changes has, have happened really early in penguin evolution by the divergence, the branching off of our giant penguin. So coincidentally, around the same time we are finding the first evidence of feathers in this giant penguin, other colleagues are making the discovery that fossil feathers can preserve evidence of their color. What the feathers contain are imprints of color imparting organelles in the feather. And what they in fact record is the shape and size and packing of these organelles called melanosomes that contain melanin. All living penguins have this distinct black and white tuxedo-like appearance and the fossil is in a uh, gray tone and reddish brown. This is only the second color map of an extinct vertebrate, that is mammal or bird. The, only the second time we've been able to reconstruct color in an extinct organism. Penguins are quite different from what we imagine them to be sort of in movies or what we see today. That there's this really rich history in penguins that we are just beginning to understand.